Anticoantral CSOM. Introduction Chronic suppurative otitis media is a long-standing infection of a part or hole of the middle ear cleft, which is characterized by ear discharge and a permanent perforation. It involves the postural superior part of the middle ear cleft that is attic, antrum, posterior tympanum, and mastoid. It is associated with cholesteatoma, due to which there are chances of risk of serious complications because of its bone-eroding properties. For this reason, the disease is also called unsafe or dangerous type. When chronic suppurative otitis media is associated with cholesteatoma, the disease is called an active squamosal type of otitis media. It can be primary acquired and secondary acquired. If it has developed from a retraction pocket, it's considered as primarily acquired. Secondary cholesteatoma is when it develops from pre-existing perforation or is iatrogenic in origin. The term, an active squamosal type of otitis media, is used when there is a retraction pocket without cholesteatoma. Histology The middle ear cleft is lined by ciliated columnar epithelium in the anterior and inferior part, cuboidal epithelium in the middle part, and pavement-like epithelium in the attic region. In normal persons, there is no keratinizing squamous epithelium in the middle ear cleft, and its presence is called cholesteatoma. Cholesteatoma Cholesteatoma is defined as a sac in the middle ear, which is lined by a keratinizing stratified squamous epithelium containing desquamated epithelium as keratin debris. It is also described as skin in the wrong place. This structure has a capacity for progressive and independent growth at the expense of underlying bone and bone erosion properties and has a tendency to recur unless removed completely. Structure Cholesteatoma is an epidermal inclusion cyst that opens into the external auditory canal. It contains desquamated debris, which is mainly white-yellow keratin flakes and resembles cholesterol crystals from its keratinizing squamous epithelial lining. Cholesteatoma has two parts, matrix and central white mass. 1. Matrix It's made up of keratinizing squamous epithelium, which rests on a thin stroma of fibrous tissues. 2. Central white mass it consists of keratin debris, which is produced by the matrix. Mechanism of bony erosion Initially, it was thought that the physical pressure of cholesteatoma causes bony erosion. At the cellular level, it was noted that the chief factor in bony erosion is the activation of osteoclast. The release of inflammatory mediators such as cytokinin and interleukin-1-alpha from macrophages and epidermal keratinocytes plays an important role in osteoclast activation. Other humoral factors that have been suggested are prostaglandin, cathepsin D, and parathyroid hormone-like protein. In addition to bone destruction, new bone formation can occur in cholesteatoma, which is mostly seen in the attic and mastoid antrum. Classification Cholesteatoma of the temporal bone is classified into two categories, congenital and acquired. 1. Congenital cholesteatoma it arises from the embryonic epidermal cell rest, which is keratinizing epithelium and trapped in the middle ear cleft or temporal bone. The three important sites include the middle ear, the petrous apex, and the cerebellopontine angle. A middle ear congenital cholesteatoma presents with conductive hearing loss and a white mass that can be seen behind an intact tympanic membrane. It may rupture through the tympanic membrane and present with a discharging ear. 
then it becomes indistinguishable from chronic suppurative otitis media. 2. Acquired cholesteatoma They are the most common varieties of cholesteatomas, which result from acute otitis media and otitis media with effusion. Acquired cholesteatoma is also termed unsafe chronic suppurative otitis media. Acquired cholesteatomas are further divided into two types, primary and secondary. A. In primary acquired cholesteatoma, there is neither history of previous otitis media, a pre-existing perforation, nor otorrhea. B. Secondary acquired cholesteatoma. This cholesteatoma occurs in pre-existing perforation of pars tensa, which is usually posterior superior marginal perforation or sometimes large central perforation. Pathogenesis of acquired cholesteatoma. The exact pathogenesis of acquired cholesteatoma is unknown, but various theories have been put forward. The four basic theories are invagination, hyperplasia, migration, and metaplasia theories. Attempts have been made to explain the pathogenesis based on the combination of these theories. 1. Invagination Theory by Whitmack This theory explains primary acquired cholesteatoma. Invagination of the tympanic membrane from the attic, that is pars flaxida part of the tympanic membrane, or postero superior part of pars tensa, occurs in the form of retraction pockets. The outer surface of the tympanic membrane is lined with stratified squamous epithelium. After invagination, it forms the matrix of cholesteatoma and lays down the keratin in the retraction pocket. When the retraction pocket deepens because of negative middle ear pressure due to eustachian tube obstruction and repeated inflammation, the desquamated keratin cannot be cleared from the recess and results in cholesteatoma. Bacteria infect the keratin matrix, forming biofilms, resulting in chronic infection and epithelial proliferation. The most common sites for this primary acquired cholesteatoma are pars flaxida or attic, as it's less fibrous and has less resistance to displacement, and the postural superior quadrant of pars tensa. The attic perforation is the proximal end of an expanding invaginated sac. 2. Epithelial Invasion or Migration Theory by Haberman This theory explains secondary acquired cholesteatoma. The migration of keratinizing squamous epithelium of the tympanic membrane or deep canal wall into the middle ear occurs through a tympanic membrane perforation. The pre-existing perforation is especially of the marginal type, where part of annulus tympanicus has already been destroyed. The damaged intermucosal lining of the tympanic membrane, which is due to inflammation, allows the outer keratinizing squamous epithelium to migrate inward and produce this secondary acquired cholesteatoma. Cholesteatomas, arising after temporal bone fractures, may result through this migration. 3. Basal Cell Hyperplasia Theory by Lang and Rudai Prickle epithelial cells of pars flaxida may invade the subepithelial tissue by means of proliferating columns of epithelial cells. These basal lamina breaks allow the invasion of epithelial cones into subepithelial connective tissue, leading to the formation of microcholesteatomas. This later enlarges and perforates an intact tympanic membrane and presents as primary acquired cholesteatoma. 4. Squamous Metaplasia Theory by Wendt and Said Middle ear mucosa can undergo metaplasia due to repeated infection through a pre-existing perforation, resulting in secondary acquired cholesteatoma. There is a chance for the simple squamous or cuboidal epithelium of middle ear cleft to undergo a metaplastic transformation into keratinizing epithelium. The pluripotent epithelial cells, stimulated by inflammation, can become keratinizing, which enlarges because of accumulated debris and gets into contact with tympanic membrane. 
With infection and inflammation, cholesteatoma results in perforation of the tympanic membrane and presents as primary acquired cholesteatoma. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.